Hi, I'm Robbie Brown, Drive Specialist with Electric Supply and Equipment. And in this demonstration, we want to introduce you to the new PowerFlex 755 TS Drive, as well as walk you through a startup using the Wizard and Connected Components Workbench. First step in connecting to our PowerFlex 755 TS Drive on Connected Components Workbench, we're going to click Discover. This is going to bring up your RX links, and we're going to want to use the 1203-USB Data Highway Plus driver that we have pre-configured. Once we point to the DPI port, we'll select OK, and you'll see that we are connecting to the device. Now you see that we're connected using the green bar along the top. It is, however, important that we add this device to the project by selecting this button here. This is going to pull all our drive parameters from the drive itself and save it in the project organizer on the left. Once the device has been added, we'll give it a name. In this instance, we'll name it PowerFlex 755 TS Demo. Now in a change from the PowerFlex 755, we do want to point out that in order to change motor control methods, there is a different location and a different parameter group altogether. You can access this information on your device's overview tab while clicking Device Definition, Dynamic Features, and you'll see your primary motor control method and your secondary motor control method. In this demonstration, we will disable our secondary motor control method and we will use induction volts per hertz as our primary. Once we accept these changes, we will navigate to our Wizards section to locate our PowerFlex 755T Startup Wizard. Once you hit Start, CCW will upload the parameters and you'll be taken to the home screen of the Startup Wizard. If you haven't already, it's good practice to always reset the drive to defaults to make sure that you're getting no odd parameter sets. Once you have successfully reset the drive to default, you're ready to start the wizard. So we will select the drive language, which is going to be English. Our motor control method is going to be induction volts per hertz. We'll set this to fan and pump so we don't need a custom volts per hertz curve. Once we hit the next button, we will enable or disable flying start. You're then prompted for the motor nameplate information. In this exercise, we have a 230 VAC, 0.7 amp, 60 hertz, 1600 rotations per minute. Our power is in kilowatts and a four pole motor count. Our stop mode and bus regulation options. So for this, we're gonna use a ramp to stop and our DC bus regulator mode will adjust the frequency if we see that our DC bus voltage is getting too high. Then we're prompted to perform a direction test. Once you hit start, your motor should operate, and we see that our motor is rotating in the forward direction. So we'll hit yes and apply and OK to finish the direction test. Now that our direction test is complete, we'll hit next. For the next portion, we'll do a tuning. In this instance, we'll do a static tune because our motor is coupled with a load. To perform the test, we'll click Start, and you'll see the status change from Stopped to Auto-Tuning. Once the tuning is successful, you'll see down here at the bottom of the screen that your motor measurements have been calculated and these parameters have been changed in your device settings. Once we hit next, we'll be prompted to set up our start and stop control signals. For this demonstration, we'll use network control. We're then prompted to set up our speed reference and again, we can select port zero for PowerFlex 755TS main control. We'll select parameter 211 for embedded ethernet reference. Hit apply. You'll see that our reference port is our dedicated port 13 for ethernet and we'll select next. Our ramp rates and speed limits. We'll want to use a 10 second X cell and D cell. Max forward speed, 60 hertz. 
maximum reverse speed, negative 60 hertz, in a bipolar direction mode. We'll click next, and any other digital inputs, these are optional for the user that you can select clear faults, enables, auxiliary faults, pre-charges, etc. If you have no other additional digital inputs, you can select next. At the end of the startup wizard, you'll be given a summary of changes page that you can print and document for all other future inquiries related to this drive. This will help your technicians to see which parameters have been changed or need to be changed in the event of a corrupt program file. From this page, you can print the summary of changes or you can finish the wizard. And that's how you use the startup wizard for the PowerFlex 755 TS drive using connected component software. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to your electric supply and equipment account manager or product specialist.